morning. Well, Bobby Cummings is a chief executive of Unlock, the National Association of Reform Defenders, and joins us on the programme now. Morning, Bobby. Good morning to you, Tim. Uh, Bobby, the rehabilitation of criminals, it's always something that's a very hot topic. Yeah. Why are we still not getting it right? Well, we have to look at many things here. First off, employers are very often reluctant to take on someone with a criminal record. And they often discriminate against anyone who has even a small criminal record that's spent. And the CRB, no matter what training you put in and no matter what political will you put in, unless we reform the Rehabilitation of Offenders Act and have a time limit when a conviction is spent, a realistic one, um, people are always going to be blocked out of, you know, out of employment. Do you think, I mean, are, are employers being properly protected or when they actually employ someone who has a record? Um, I, well, yeah, I mean, one, if you, for instance, I, you know, I really am up for Ken Clark and, and Richard Branson, what they're saying, and Lou McNally, I actually met and I've spoken to the man, um, I've got a lot of respect for him, but they are all missing out on that same thing, is the discrimination of ex-offenders. Now, when you look at that protection uh, for an employer, if you talk to most employers, um, the majority that, that employ ex-offenders, they say they're the best workers they've got because, one, they know how hard it is to get to a job, so they will stay with the company. Mm. Secondly, um, if there's a fiddle going on in the firm, they're the first one to spot it and stop it because they don't want to get blamed for it, so you're getting a free security guard there. And fourthly, because someone has invested their trust in them, um, and they don't abuse that trust. So you've got a loyal employer who's going to turn up every morning because they know that the job market for them is very, very small. Is enough being done in prisons to give people kind of constructive work to do to prepare them for a future of, of employment? No, not really. I mean, in some prisons now, new things are coming in. But when you've got someone doing up to a 12-month sentence, there's no rehabilitation programmes that actually work. And where the government's going, going wrong, and, you know, I really support this government because they are actually trying to deal with the, the problem, this coalition, is that they're listening to service deliverers who, when they say, OK, you know, what do we need? Well, if you're a service deliverer, you're going to tell them what you've got on your menu instead of looking at what the client needs. And so you have to have an independent source that is not taking government contracts to deliver to be able to say, look, this is what the client needs. And that's what Unlock does. Unlock talks to the people, sees where it's going wrong. And, you know, I've been an advisor for Blair government, and I advise this government on quite a lot of stuff, and I sit on all the think tanks. Yeah. And, um, you know, we look at, for instance, you know, if you train someone up for employment, um, they couldn't go to the job because they didn't have a bank account. Now, because that weren't funded and it weren't part of a contract, no one wanted to do it, but Unlock done it. Now, every serving prisoner can get a bank account, which means they can get employment because every company pays through the back system. So it's the little things like that, that they're, the, the major things that they're missing out on. Which, which government do you think has listened to you and Unlock more? I think this coalition government, I, I must say that, I mean, it weren't that, well, a couple of months ago I was sitting down talking to Lord McNally himself and absolutely switched on. And Ken Clark, I mean, he, don't worry, they're on our website all the time looking at what we're saying and what we're, you know, and we advise them properly, even with riots and how to deal with youths and, and schools and that sort of thing. We're a respected charity like that. But do you, are you facing pressure at the moment? Because I think... A lot of people at the moment, based on what's happened with, with the, the crime race burglaries and yeah. also the riots and things like that, I think we have, uh, as a society, perhaps an all-time low tolerance for people who are committing crimes yeah. and a frustration that perhaps sentences aren't necessarily what we'd want. Do you find that in that climate it's harder for you to get your voice heard? Not really, because when, you know, the public are fed up with, they've had it with previous government, you know, they've had it all the time, the smoke mirrors and the magician's tricks, you know, that don't work. And so when they talk to us, I mean, we speak to a lot of victims of crime. I actually uh, support quite a few victims of crime because they, they want to make sense. And one, why did it happen to me? And secondly, when they get over the initial anger, and rightly so, they, you know, you should be angry if you've been burgled or anything like that. And once they get over that, they want to know that in prison that person is being rehabilitated, not just punished, but rehabilitated because they don't want the next victim of crime to happen. But what do we say to people who, who have struggled to get work themselves in the situation we're in with the, the dire unemployment figures? Well, this, what do you say to someone who's never committed a crime if they feel as though for some reason prisoners are getting any kind of preferential treatment into business? Well, well the thing I always say to people is, is the main thing on the streets, what we want is a safer society and we want these people, it costs £47,000 a year to keep a person in prison. We, and that's the taxpayers paying that. So what I'm saying to them is, look, better they become taxpayers than a burden on the taxpayer 
and, 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 you know, the best person for the job. I think there should be more training for, lo- like, well, we've got a thing called the Diamond Project I'm discussing with Lord McNally at the moment. And, and where it takes in long-term unemployed, it takes in low-tariff offenders. I'm not talking about the Yorkshire Rippers who are never going to get out. You know, I'm talking about low-tariff offenders, the pests in our society, if you like. Getting them there where they're doing purposeful activity, they're training for a job, and, and at the end of it, they come out as taxpayers. But you, you have got to give some incentive also to the companies to employ these people. So I, I'd say to government this, make some sort of tax, uh, tax reward yeah. for, for the companies that are saying, right, I will employ these, I will expand the business. Give them, give them some kind of a benefit. No one does yet. Yeah, no one does nothing for nothing. But also, what we've got to look at, instead of importing labour, if we train these people into a trade, yeah. Right. Then we're employing, we're investing in our future. We're investing in our young, in our future, and we're not borrowing from another country. I think we've got to start looking at our own country and investing in our long-term unemployed instead of importing it. Bobby Cummings, thank you very much. Bobby Cummings, the Chief Executive Unlock, the National Association of Reformed Offenders, on getting offenders back into work.